This is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com and today I want to talk about acceleration and weight transfer. This is primarily on a car like a drag race car that has the ability to tune the power and also the weight distribution. But we're going to get into wheelies and traction prediction using Mega Log Viewer HD and the custom math fields to create formulas to help predict wheelies and traction as it relates to these cars. I'm going to talk about how we can add and pull power at just the right time in the run using the turbo timers and that sort of thing and how we can move weight around to get the behavior we are looking for in our car. We've all seen these dune buggies. These cars have anywhere from about 50 horsepower up to 150 horsepower but they have all the weight concentrated in the back of the car. You might only have a couple of hundred pounds on the front tires when the car is sitting still. And we all know that these things are wheelie prone, even with these very low power levels. We've also seen cars that have way too much weight in the front of the car. And in this particular case, every time the guy gets on the power, he just fries the rear tires. Notice how the front has picked up very little, if any, and also that he's only partially into the throttle. This is our Camaro from one of my previous videos. Nothing's really changed here. You can see the center of gravity height in the circle just below the mirror. I've drawn in the force vector, which is the vector that accelerates the car. I know the guys that are really the math uh, Guys are going to say, well, that's pointed the wrong way, but we're going to go with it this direction just for clarity. It's this arrow is the force that accelerates the car. And we have the weight vectors, which if the car was 50-50 sitting still, a 50-50 weight distribution, these arrows would be the same length. But as the car accelerates, most of the weight comes off the front of the car and almost all the weight is on the rear. And the maximum length of that arrow is the total weight of the car. Say if it's a 3,000 pound car, just about to pull a wheelie, you might be at 2,900 here and 100 pounds here. And as it pulls the wheelie, that front arrow goes off to zero. The max length of the acceleration arrow in red is the maximum available force to accelerate the car. That works out to be the total weight of the car, call it 3,000, times a coefficient of friction. The coefficient of friction, if you may remember from physics, runs from about 1.2 on a street car, street tire, on concrete, up to about 2.75 or so on a drag race radial on VHT. You hear acceleration numbers of like 5 and 6 or something on the rails. Basically what they're doing is adding downforce with a rear wing to get into the math. But we're going to assume for these calculations that the car has no significant downforce. This is our graph from the previous videos. And please, if you haven't seen this yet, go back to the previous videos to watch them first. But what I've added is in green the max possible acceleration in G's. Here it is right here. And I've also added in green at the bottom the weight on the rear tires, which is a percentage of the total weight. And I have the weight on the front tires, which is in pounds. So you can see it drives itself to zero. As little as weight as possible to put on the front tires is zero. Again, from the previous video, I explained how on a drag race car, you want to maximize the area under the curve of the acceleration drawn here in blue. But notice the max possible acceleration is quite a bit higher at the very beginning and as the guy drives down the track. So how did I do this? Basically what I have is 11 input cells that we use when we build the car. Here they are zoomed in. Where the ones in white are generally for any given car once you've built it. It's the center gravity height off the ground, the car weight, say 3,000 pounds, the percentage of weight on the front, which goes from about 
Uh, 60% front weight distribution on a stock car. Out for a dune buggy, maybe 10, 15, 20% of the weight on the front end. The rollout time, granted, that's relatively constant for any given car that you build. Runs in the 0.2 to 0.3 tenths of a second. And of course, your wheelbase. That's from front to rear of the car. Call it maybe 100, 110 inches on a typical drag race car. We have in yellow are the adjustments that we make to get your sensors dead on. So like your vehicle speed sensor might be a mile an hour off or the, the rear may be the same sort of thing. And then in red, that's the coefficient of friction. Again, that varies from about 1.2 on a street tire up through about two and a half, two and three quarter. And that number does vary a little from track to track, day to day. In Make a Log Viewer HD, under help and help topics, up pops a screen. And in that screen is this thing called Math Parser. If you hit Math Parser, what it does is pops up a screen of all the available math fields you have. Let me zoom in real quick. But you can see it has some smoothing functions, sines, cosines, uh, absolute value, and rounding, and all sorts of other things. But it's these formulas you do to write the math. On the far right side is what's called the syntax. It, hap it works very similar to Excel. If you understand how Excel works in writing formulas, you can catch right on to this. But with those two bits of information, I can run calculations to get all of the rest of these things. Let me give a quick example of writing a formula. What you have is under calculated fields, optional fields. There's some that are built into the software. I happen to have the one called millisecond per cycle. That's engine cycle. But if I wanted to create injector duty cycle based on we already have the pulse width, all I do is type in 100 times the injector pulse width, and you don't have to retype this, by the way, it is in brackets, square brackets, but if you had control spacebar on the latest softwares, it will give you a drop down, and you can go down, hit IN for the first thing that starts with INJ, and hit pulse width, and divided by the milliseconds per cycle, and you can get duty cycle, where your launch, this is basically your trans brake button being released, RPM comes up, the track timers start. Here is your location of the track where it's the 60 foot, 330 and 660 or eighth mile. Here we have the acceleration in blue and the max possible acceleration in green. This number is a calculated field. Acceleration comes from accelerometers in the car. And then what we have is mile per hour front tire which you can see in this case is having a little trouble keeping up, but we also have the miles per hour calculated from the accelerometers and also from the rear wheel speed sensors. And everybody knows in drag racing, you can't really count on the front tire to give you the right answer. You can't count on the rear tire to give you the correct answer because they may be slipping. So what I use is all three of them to come up with the real answer. And then I have the weight on the rear tires as a percentage and the weight on the front tires as a raw number. I also have a calculated fields that I call DR race on. Basically what it's watching is the throttle position sensor and the trans brake. When that releases, I start all the timers and you can see right here is where the nitrous turns on and the acceleration starts. Again, from the previous video, here's the area under the curve for the acceleration. But notice this yellow area. This is where I left some power on the table. I could have hit the car a little harder out of the hole, but right here, you do not want to add any more nitrous. And you can see where they start to diverge again, where you could add power if it was available for you. You can see where the tire, the front tire was just skimming off the ground. That's perfect. If you can see possibly in the video that there is a slight difference between the theoretical acceleration and the front tire. What that is is that front tire is still slipping. 
And again, the car fully went up on the back tires, which is why it was just barely slipping. Here's the same car in a different run. I'm zoomed out a little bit. And by the way, I didn't set it here, but if you set your cursor right here and hit control zero, it will set your timers at the bottom so you can see how far into the run you are. But I happen to have the track timers is on this display of 1.22 seconds. And you can see where he is very close. The two lines are very close to each other. Let me go ahead and highlight that. Here it is where the two lines, the gap between the lines is highlighted. But between the red arrows is where you don't want to add much more power. And sure enough, you can see where the front tires are just skimming on the ground and actually lift for a split second, start setting back down. Right here is where you would want to add more power if you had power available. It turns out he was fully on the nitrous at that point. That is a near textbook run. Also notice at the bottom that is very close to his 100% weight transfer onto the rear tires with virtually zero weight on the fronts. Here's the same car, different weekend, what was a far slicker track? And here it is, the calculation for 2.591 is his wheelie limit. That's based on where the weight is in the car. But right here is it runs this calculation and says, our maximum traction limit is about 1.2. And sure enough, these two lines got very close. Also notice at the bottom, you do not fully have the weight on the rear tires. And sure enough, when the two lines got together, I predicted there was going to be a problem with traction. Here it is right here where you can see the rear tires start to blow off. Let me highlight that. Then you can see right here is where the driver noticed. Here's the first place the driver really noticed to get out of the power. That's about two tenths of a second total. But again, the tires just keep accelerating. They finally start to catch up. The driver decides to turn the nitrous back on and sure enough, the car starts accelerating, again gets to the limit, and starts blowing off the tires, and he decides to go ahead and get out of the power entirely. You can also see at the bottom in the orange, he's nowhere near 100% weight transfer. So if I was tuning this car, I would be inclined to pull a little of the nitrous out right here, and also move weight to the back of the car so you can get the thing on the rear tires, just to get it to accelerate. Here's the same car, same event, very next run. The only change he made was he brought the nitrous in, took him a full two seconds to bring in the nitrous. You can see that the car never really got on the rear tires, but at least the acceleration looked beautiful. There's almost no gap between the two lines. Here it is highlighted. You probably could hit the nitrous a little bit harder right here, taper it down so that the car was just barely skimming the tires off the ground and right about, but here it is about 25 feet down the track is when he goes ahead and sets the front tires back down and it makes a beautiful pass. Keep in mind, you could hit this car harder and put more power down if you just moved weight to the back of the car because you did not have the weight fully transferred to the rear. This is a different car. This happens to be a turbo car, uh, roughly the same sort of performance, but this one happens to be a quarter mile car. So here it is, the, six, the 60 foot, the 330, 660, and here's the quarter mile. And you can see he launches beautifully. I'll go ahead and highlight that. But you see, he does a better job of putting the car right on the power limit. He almost left nothing on the table as far as traction goes. But notice right here, the two lines start to diverge, and sure enough, he was not pulling it up to full boost. If I was tuning this motor, the first thing I'd do is try to figure out why he's not coming up to boost, even though his traction is coming up. The other thing to notice is down here in the orange box, he's not fully transferred on the rear tires. And I would advise him to move weight back farther, and even though he had a great hole shot, let's add little weight to the rear of the car so we can get it on the rear tires and let's hit it a little harder out of the hole. We'll see if we can move this whole curve up closer to the wheelie limit. 
This is the same car, same pass, but what I've brought to the table is the front and rear ride height sensors, where in white is the front of the car up in the air, and the red is where the back of the car goes down. Notice when he launches, front end comes up, back squats, and then the back somewhere right before the shift, the car is pretty much back to normal ride height. Except, watch, look right here. The car is slowly jacking the rear of the car up. That may be a shock setting that's pushing the back of the car up into the air, but when he hits second gear, both front and rear comes back to normal ride height. See it's normal ride height here at the launch. He's back to normal ride height right after the shift. And then as he's hitting bumps, the car's moving up and down a little bit. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about trying to tune this. I just want to point out that it brings a whole new world of information to the game of tuning these cars. I want to thank my friends at TunerStudio.com. These are the guys that develop Megalog Viewer HD. That's the software I use to tune almost all of these cars. And I have a PayPal account. Should you have the desire to help me stay motivated, you can always help donate at paypal.me slash how EFI works. And if you want me to set this up for your car, you can email me at whittlebeast at gmail.com. I can do this on almost any data, uh, provided you do have the wheel speed sensors and the accelerometers. But Holly data, almost any data works just fine. Thank you for watching.